Hey there, my name is John Milan. I've been an artist for all of my life and I'll tell you a little bit about me. I really love art, so it has been my entire focus of life to study art and go to galleries and go to museums. I just feel so fortunate to work with Ellie. She's just brilliant and is so exciting. Every single day is something new that through art, you can tell a lot of stories, get your point across, things that you're thinking of, your perspectives, and I'm, I'm glad that people love art also because it's a way for everyone to communicate and it's very therapeutic in so many ways. I am finding out that there is no end to it. There, things have not all been done. Art is not, you know, dead. It's, it's more alive than ever before. Well, I'm really excited about this collaboration with John. We collaborated for years and years since, let's see, 2005. And then we stopped um, several years ago because we both wanted to develop our own voice separately just see what we could do, see what we could create. This is our first time coming back together, collaborating after that big span of time of development. And so I'm very excited to see what comes out of it this time around. And I think we're both excited. I think one of the main things to know about me, if you consider my daily flow or what I do uh, with my time, is to know that I am a very much a go-getter I cannot stand idle time or too much relaxation. To me, relaxation is not very relaxing. I like to fill my schedule, fill my day with lots of productive things. When I start out in the day, I, I put some music on. I like a whole range of music, but I like drum beats and, and old records. And so George and I, we get the music going as loud as we can, not to wake everybody up and drink a bunch of coffee. I don't get up and drink coffee right away or need to wake up. As soon as I wake up, I'm pretty wide awake and ready for something creative. I get inspiration from everyday stuff and some of the things I like to do are to stretch and, you know, go for a walk, see some nature. I love my dachshund, so I take my dogs out for a walk and we uh, have horses here, so I usually brush those horses and feed them and uh, my wife is the one riding those horses but I kind of help out. That's my relaxation time I think. Where I get really recalibrated and kind of come back to myself, feel in tune you know with something and connect. Connecting with Solomon my horse is sort of a way for me to connect with myself. I ride Solomon you know just spend time with him. I love it. When we decide to paint together and we are going to do half and half of a piece, I always think of the amount of control that's going to be there. We've experimented with it so many different ways that we've come up with a formula that we love and uh, we just let things go. You know, you have some very heavy textures and heavy looks but you can change it 100% if you really feel like you need to in a painting. I mean, that's a good point about giving up control in the creative process. I think it's a lot like horseback riding because a horse has to give up control. Like a horse can just take off with you and do whatever they want. They could throw you off, right? But they, they choose to submit because they respect your leadership. They trust you. And horses are wired to look to leadership. They want to trust somebody that has more, you know, strength than them and dominance and sort of give in to that. That's, that's what they want. If you are a trustworthy leader, they will, you know, follow you. And so I feel like for me, I don't want to give up control at all if I don't trust the person or I feel like they're going to mess up the painting or they don't know what they're doing they're not any good, I'd be like, don't touch my painting. Like, but that is my good. painting. You can't have, you can't touch it. When you do trust, but, it yeah. does feel good. But I totally trust you because I know, uh, not that you haven't messed up paintings before, I have too, but 
I trust that for the most part, you're gonna make it better. To me, it's really inspiring to be able to kind of co-create or create something together with somebody that you know so well. I grew up with John. I mean, we've been together. I've known him since I was 12 years old. We've known each other a long time. I barely remember life without John and he could probably say the same. So when you know somebody that closely and that intimately, to be able to kind of create artwork together is I think really inspiring. When I first met Ellie, I was just blown away. I wanted to meet her and get to know her and I was shy and awkward and I'm really not the ladies man you, that you might imagine I am. And she is just so gracious and funny and, and serious at the same time. I was mesmerized by her and I was thinking it would be fun if we were doing some art together, painting, sketching, just to see if she was into that. And it turns out that she was. Right away, we became friends. Uh, we had been friends for now over 30 years, but we didn't get married until after some years of art school. With art school kind of coming from Hawaii's laid back style, going into a high pressured school with a lot of rules and materials, it was quite a challenge. And we could not do collaborations at that point. <laughs> we, we were just doing our work as quickly and as professionally as we could. And we just enjoyed that experience of, uh, we learned about ourselves. We decided to get married in 95, we got married. There was a time when we weren't painting. Well, she was and I wasn't. I had two years where I just went to my lowest self. I. I knew I should be painting, but I was working these unusual hours, unloading trucks, and just got really low and had a different time schedule. And so a lot of uh, families these days, you know, if they don't stick together and make a plan, it, it can be pretty hard. But when you're going after something you really love, when I started sketching again, I got right back into it. And she always was there encouraging me to go for it, you know, um, if she was doing her own art, I was always watching from afar, loving it, and wondering I should get back on track, and that's what I really want to do. It just wasn't uh, coming out. Well, we have been working on a series. So the series is uh, five paintings. They all involve horses and cities. These cities are sort of old, old world cities with a lot of arches and architecture, really interesting architecture and light in the architecture. And then the horse is kind of being in this double exposure with it, except for there's one elephant in the series. It's the elephant in the room, I guess, the elephant in the city. How that came about is I went into John's studio and I saw this background he had been doing that was really exciting to me. It was had all this like kind of fluorescent colors in there. It was very like urban looking. I thought, wow, let's let's do uh, one of our horse and city paintings on one of these backgrounds. So we tried it with the elephant. We really like it, how it came out. So this is a continuation of that. Uh, so I think this series sort of started out with more neutral tones and less color and then I spotted something I liked in John's studio that sort of began the inspiration for these last two paintings of the series. My expectations going into this was that it would it would be a little bit more complicated than it was because of all the architecture that was in the source and all the buildings and the angles and the perspective and so many things kind of converging. I thought it would be more difficult, but you really took it to, uh, kind of a stage of completion pretty quickly. So it seemed like you were really flowing and it came to you easily. What I found is what you had laid down was so interesting and good to work with that it made it flow very fast that way. But I was concerned that I didn't have enough time because it was so large. But as I went on and on, um, the ideas just kept coming to me and I was adding little hidden things in there.
overall, the general process is I start it, John finishes it, but that's not totally true because depending on the method or the process that we're choosing, which is determined by the idea. When I think of how Ellie and I come up with an idea, build the blueprint for the next painting we're gonna create. When I think of how it will turn out, I can almost visualize it from the start, but I cannot put it into words. Uh, Ellie is so uh, eloquent and uh, articulate and she can write and describe a painting and I may say, oh, let's put some big objects in there with some sketchy lines flying off the side. Or we, we come up with some slang that she and I understand. We have our different ways of speaking and so we can get our point across pretty quick. When it comes to this personal language uh, being described, in the visual, the actual painting, we do put our dreams in there. We do come up with ideas in an instant. Something will spark and we will be able to get it made because this is the true collaboration would be when two people can agree on something. So in this particular case, John is going to start it. I will do the main thrust of getting the form in there once it's been sort of mapped out. And I created the source. So that means that I created, you know, the composition and, and sort of the elements and, and the idea. But John's going to execute the drawing of it. And then I'll take it and start blocking in the different forms, doing some sort of mixed media things with acrylic washes. And I guess the mixed media section is kind of my flair. So the mixed media part where I mostly uh, paint on these collaborations, you know, incorporate the spray paint, different materials, put a lot of like abstraction in there that sets John up when what he'll do is he'll look at what I've abstracted and he'll refine it and kind of pull it into and do some editing like that needs to go this needs to come forward I know what he does with that so over the years we've created this sort of language between us and I think that's a big part of this process that's really unique that I don't know that I could collaborate this way with any other person and the same with John because he understands me and he gets what I'm doing with this abstraction and I know when I do it what he's going to do with it and how beautiful he'll make it. So that I think is the real you know, collaborative process in there. This latest piece that we're working on with the large flying horses, it is in reference to family crests where you have these mythological creatures and they're with a castle or with a little road or a, a hillside. And to me, family is so strong and important, and it should be. So I would say initially on this particular painting, I sort of chose a subject matter that I know he likes. We did this painting in the past of two horses rearing up at each other, and it was sort of like a family crest. We both liked that painting, so it's a spin-off of that idea, so I know I can get him on board with the idea because it's something similar to what we've done in the past, but kind of redone in a whole new way. And I'm using one of his favorite methods to start a painting. So going into it, I know that he's gonna like the idea. I suggested that we do family crest and we sketched ideas back and forth. And this one happens to have a castle in the background, more than just an emblem of a shape of a logo that you might see on a special card or something. And so from our travels, we've seen these family crests everywhere. And I thought, to make a modern one in a positive way, people could relate to that in their families. Another thing that I think of that it could mean is like, you know, you have two parts to yourself, like maybe it's your soul and your spirit, or maybe it's younger self and your older self, or who you are and who you're becoming, something like that. I think whenever you're going through change and transformation, and you're becoming like your better self, there's always a battle. There's always a little bit of resistance. At least there is for me when I'm changing and I'm becoming better and I'm, I'm growing. There's this part of me that resists and wants to, you know, hang on to territory and hang on to structures and thought processes, and, you know, maybe belief systems that are ruins, you know, they're crumbling and they're, they don't have the structural strength anymore. 
as I'm kind of changing and becoming a new person. So that was another thing I was kind of thinking about as I was painting it is how we, we battle ourselves sometimes. I love not knowing why we paint what we paint until you're in it painting and then the painting begins to speak and it begins to tell you what, what it is and what it's about. Getting in the motion of it, just go straight to it. Yeah. We got a blueprint, we're gonna build it and enjoy it. Yeah. And it grows on you.